this video, we will be looking at first order quadratic ordinary differential equations. The specific type of equation we will be looking at is called the Riccati equation. All right, hi everybody. That title is quite a mouthful here. Um, it's, a, it's a big idea and this is a, a little bit different than what we normally uh, look at in these, these videos here. Uh, but I'm responding to a, a question that I got. Uh, and I, I hope I do a little bit of justice to, to the question. Um, we're taking a look at this thing called the Riccati equation, okay, which is, like you, like you heard, it is a first order ordinary differential equation that's quadratic. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second here. Uh, but just as a preface to this, uh, I'm looking at a Riccati equation. Uh, the, the term Riccati here refers to a, a kind of a larger branch of, of or group of equations that are related to matrices in, in more generally here. Um, but for me to go through and, and give you a little bit of introduction to that, I'd have to go back and do a, a fair bit more relearning of that. It's been a little while since I've, I've gone over that stuff here. So I hope, I hope that by going through what I'm about to go through here that I give you a little bit of a sense of how the Riccardi equation works and gets, gets solved. Um, uh, to the person that, that asked this question, I, I hope this addresses kind of what you were looking at. Uh, if not, I, I apologize for that. Uh, but like I said, this it's been a little while since I've, I've done this. And so, um, yeah, that other, that other form of this, uh, the more general form of this is a little bit out of my league right at this moment here. I'd have to go back and spend a little bit of time on it. But anyway, so here we go. This is a differential equation because it's got a derivative in it, okay? Now, it's it's first order uh, differential equation because the derivative here is simply a first derivative. It's not like a second derivative, third derivative, whatever. So first derivative here. And it's quadratic. Now, this is a little bit different than what we would have seen in, pa in the past here. In past examples of quadratic equations, uh, it's quadratic because the independent variable is being squared. But in those cases here, the, the reason we call it quadratic here is because we're, we're getting, um, or sorry, I shouldn't say the reason why we call it quadratic, but in, in those instances here, the independent variable refers to a number, okay? And that's going to be x here. Now, the solution to this is a little different. The solution to a differential equation is the function that obeys this, this rule, that when I take the derivative, this is what I get. In a, in a quadratic that you might have studied in, in high school in, in grade 11, the solution would be like a number. In fact, probably a, a pair of numbers usually. Okay, this is a little different. So this is quadratic in the dependent variable, not the independent variable. So the derivative here is going to, it essentially is a, a function of the original function itself. So it's kind of a, a, a higher level of thinking. The result here won't be a number, it's going to be a function. Now, a lot of these differential equations, uh, they're not solved very easily. In fact, uh, looking through differential equations, sometimes it can be fairly frustrating because th what happens here is people do work solving these things and essentially they'll come up with methods of solving them if the qu equation has a certain look to it. Okay, there's a certain pattern to it, like this, for example, this is called a Riccati equation, but there are lots of others. And a lot of times our methods of solving them have to be adapted to the equation themselves. Now, that means that you don't get these general methods that apply all over the place, and so they got to be kind of specific. So what I'm going to show you here is a way of handling this. Now, I'm going to do this in general, and then I'm going to do a couple of examples for you here. Now. Oftentimes, what we what we do here is we're we're going to do a substitution, okay? Or you're going to create a, a multiplication factor to to change the form of this into a simpler form of differential equation. Always kind of reducing it down, and you see that done a lot in mathematics, where where you look at a, a problem. I, I don't like the way it looks, so I'm going to change the way it looks reduce it to a form that I'm comfortable with and then and then build my solution from there. And that's just exactly what we do here. So what we do with the Riccati equation is we're going to look at a solution of the form y equals y1 plus 1 over v. Now v is going to be some function of x, okay? Some additional function of x here. So, and I know that seems like, oh my gosh, we're introducing another function of x, but just, just hear me out here. So what happens here is y1 okay, represents a particular solution. 
So we're assuming that you've got some sort of a solution to this equation. I know that seems a little bit weird at the beginning here, but you've got a, a sort of a particular solution to this that might be very obvious. What we're going to do is we're going to build a more general solution to this out of that specific solution. Okay, now what we do right now is uh, we're going to try to create something that we can set this guy equal to. We're just going to assume the structure of our answer here is this right here. So I'm going to take the derivative of this. So the derivative dy by dx is going to equal, well, the derivative of y1 by dx. And then when I take the, the derivative of 1 over v here, I'm going to get negative 1 over v squared. But again, v is an, another function, a new function of, of x. Now, I don't exactly know what v is, by the way. I'm, I'm using v as a variable here. I don't know what that, that function is specifically. It could, be, it could be anything. Now, that, okay, because the derivative is equal to this function right here, it's also equal to this uh, Riccati equation up here. I'm going to make that substitution. So I'm going to state here that a of x multiplied by y squared plus b of x multiplied by y plus c of x. Now, after this, I'm just going to use a, b, and c for that because it's going to just simplify what I write here. This is going to equal uh, the derivative here. Now, I'm going I'm to set that equal to the derivative of my, my uh, general solution here. Bear in mind, I don't really know what this is. This is what I'm looking for. I'm, I'm, I've got a proposed structure to my solution. I'm using that to substitute it in so that I can find the answer. Now, I, I, that might not make a lot of sense right at the beginning here, but hopefully once you see the, the answer pop out, that will make more sense. So what I'm going to do here is I've got y1 right here. I took the derivative. I got dy1 over dx. Now, because y1 is a particular solution to this equation that should satisfy this equation. So that should be that should be equal to a of x y1 squared plus b of x y1 plus c of x. And now minus 1 over v squared this this new variable here that's a a function of uh, of x there. Okay. So I've plugged that in. I've, I've used this equation, uh, this, this, uh, this little term here, and I've, I've done my derivative, set it equal to the original function here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to use this. I've got y is equivalent to y1 plus 1 over v. That is what y is equal to. That's what these two values, uh, expressions are equal to. So this is now going to be a, and I'm not going to use a of x anymore, but a, y squared is y1 plus 1 over v squared plus b y1 plus 1 over v plus c of x, oops, that's right, I just said I wasn't going to use that anymore, is going to equal a y1 squared plus b y1 plus c minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. All right, now I'm going to expand this out because it's being squared here. And I'm going to do this relatively quickly here, so I, I hope this makes sense here. This is going to end up being a y1 squared, okay, plus uh, 2a y1 over v plus a over v squared. That's this expression right here when I, when I square that binomial. Plus b y1 plus b over v plus c is equal to a y1 squared plus b y1 plus c minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Okay, now a lot of stuff here is going to start to, to disappear on me. Okay, this a y1 squared is going to cancel with this one. This b y1 is going to cancel with this one. c will cancel with this one. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply what's left by this common denominator v squared, okay? And when I do that, I will get here in this expression, I will get 2ay1v plus a plus bv, and that is going to equal, now on the right-hand side, essentially all of those terms disappeared. I multiplied by v squared, so I'm going to get negative 
dv by dx. Okay. Now I'm going to move things around a little bit. I'm going to bring this dv by dx over. I'm going to, uh, sorry, the dv by dx, this is going to be plus uh, 2ay1v plus bv is equal to negative a. Now at this point here, you might wonder, well, why did I make this particular choice here? Well, I mean, you might be wondering what the heck's going on here. And I, I get that. This, this can be relatively confusing. But let's just go back and, and go over what my goal was here. I'm looking to find the function that satisfies this equation, where I, I take its derivative and the derivative is equivalent to this. I am guessing that the structure of my answer in general is going to look like this. It's going to be some particular solution plus this 1 over v. Now, where this came from? Uh, this was just somebody had discovered that this that this particular substitution works to solve this equation, where v is some function of, of x here, now, and y1 is a particular solution. In a lot of cases, that's a pretty easy one to, to get. Now, I'll, I'll show you an example in a bit here. So now I'm going to I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to do to this function what this expression is telling me. And when I take its derivative, set it equal to this right here, plug stuff in, I get it all worked down to this. Now, the reason why this particular substitution was so useful is because this, when I factor the v out, okay, and unless you've, you've done a fair bit of, of work with this, uh, this is not going to be recognizable, but what I've just done here is I've reduced this to a linear first order differential equation. So I took a quadratic first order differential equation, okay, with this particular uh, substitution or this particular uh, solution here, uh, form of the solution, I was able to use that to rewrite this in the form of a, a for linear first order differential equation but where the, the, in, sorry, the dependent variable here is now v. But now what I can do is I can solve this for v and then work back, okay, work backwards to my, my y. And so now just to, to give you a sense of where this is gonna go here, because remember, now what I gotta do here is I, I would need to solve this one for v, for that particular v here that, that makes this true, and I could plug that in right up here. Now, I'm not going to run that through completely here, but again, just to, to get you to that next spot here, I would, I would stop here. This is now a, a different little bit of work here, and I'm going to show you how you solve this one. What we do is this is of the form, okay, dv dx plus. Now, putting this all together, okay, this is going to be of the form p of x v is equal to some q of x. So essentially, I'm just going to, what I'm doing here is I'm not doing anything clever. I'm just renaming this 2ay1 plus b. I'm just calling that p of x because remember, these, these are all functions of x. a is a function of x, so is y, so is b. Okay, a over here, uh, slightly different. It's just negative a by itself. I'm going to call that q of x. This is a, again, a linear first order differential equation uh, that can be solved by using a substitute, uh, using a multiplication factor here, uh, or an integration factor, I'm going to call rho, I'm going to multiply everything through here by rho, and my choice of rho here is going to be e to the integral of p of x dx. So I'm going to take the integral of this right here as my exponent on e, okay, I'm going to take, uh, to get my, my integration uh, function here, uh, rho. Now that looks completely odd until you see how it get how it, it works here, which is, by the way, this is really clever. Uh, whoever came up with this, man, this is just really, really clever. I'm going to now multiply this all through here by by this rho, or e to the integral of px dx. So now, and I'll, I'll use the e here, e to the integral of p of x dx. And that's multiplied by dv dx plus p of x e to the integral of p of x dx v. And I, I wrote that in a specific order for on, on purpose here. And this will be equal to q of x 
e to the integral of p of x dx. Now, when I was probably sitting in your position looking at someone work this thing through, I, I never would have seen this. But if you take a look at the left-hand side here, okay, I've got a function multiplied by the derivative of v plus v, and if you look closely at that, that is the derivative of e to the integral of p of x dx. So what we're seeing on the left-hand side here, this is, a, this is an example of the product rule. And in fact, what we're seeing here is the derivative with respect to x of the function v multiplied by e to the integral p of x dx. And that is going to equal q of x e to the integral of p of x dx. Now, what I need to do, okay, and I, I'm saying that and make it sound as if this is so easy, it's, it's not, okay, but now what I do here is I'm going to integrate both sides, okay, integrate both sides with respect to x, and then solve for v. So ultimately here, v is going to equal the integral of q of x e to the integral of p of x dx. And when this is all divided by the integral, sorry, e to the integral of p of x dx. That would then get substituted back up into here and there's your solution. Now that might seem a little bit crazy. Uh, oftentimes it's a fair bit easier to work it through than what you're seeing right here. Now, I'm going to walk you through a, a couple of examples to help illustrate this. All right, so in our first uh, example here, we're going to solve y primed plus 2xy is equal to 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And as I hinted at before here, we, we start with this, with a, a particular solution that we identify here. And just take a look at this. The derivative of x is going to be 1. Okay, and if I plug x as y into this, this is, ends up being 1 plus 2x squared. If you let y equal x, this becomes 1 plus 2x squared. So, yeah, that, that substitution there, or that solution here, y1 equals x, that does satisfy this equation. Okay, it's not a very interesting solution. Okay, and it's not the only one. And we're going to see that there are, are others here. And that's really what we're looking for here. So, not that that always happens as nicely as that uh, with differential equations, but, but oftentimes you'll see just a, a really nice, obvious solution to it. Now, so what we're going to to well, sorry, what we're going to do here first is I'm going to write this in a form that looks more like uh, the Riccati equation. So instead of y primed, I'll write dy by dx, and I'm going to bring the 2xy over. And putting that in order, I get y squared, okay, minus 2xy, plus x squared, plus 1. Now, if you want to compare this to the equation that we were looking at before, a of x is going to be 1, b of x is negative 2x, and c of x here is going to be x squared plus 1. Okay, if you just want to compare this to the, the Riccati equation that we looked at just a, a few minutes ago. Now, I'm going to use this little substitution. I'm going to guess that the structure of my answer is going to be y is equal to my first specific solution, x, plus 1 over v. And remember what I said before. I'm, I'm not sure what v is. I will find v later, okay? I'm just suggesting that there's another function here that I can introduce that helps me reduce this to an easier equation to solve. So now I take the derivative of my guess, which will be 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. And if you think back, that structure there was really important for converting this into a form that's easier to work with. So now, this derivative, if it's a solution, should be equal to that. So, y squared minus 2xy plus x squared plus 1. And in case you're not sure, sorry, I should go back and say, this 
right here, this expression should be equal to this expression because they're both equal to dy by dx. So they should be equal to each other. So that should be equal to 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Okay? Now, y is also equal to x plus 1 over v. So now let's make that substitution. So y is x plus 1 over v squared minus 2, uh, sorry, 2x, x plus 1 over v plus x squared plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Let's expand that out. So we get x squared plus, uh, sorry, not plus, oh no, yeah, that's right, plus 2x over v plus 1 over v squared, then we distribute that through minus 2x squared minus 2x over v plus x squared plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Okay, so I've expanded stuff out. I set the two derivatives equal to each other. I substituted that expression in. And now if this is like that, that previous example we were looking at, that more general example, things should cancel. And actually things do. x squared plus x squared is positive 2x squared minus 2x squared. So those cancel. 2, positive 2x over v, minus 2x over v, cancel. I've got a 1 on the left, I've got a 1 on the right. Okay, and now what I'll do here is I'm going to multiply by v squared. That is going to get me 1 equal to negative dv by dx. So, I mean, that simplified immensely. In fact, now this is a what we call a separable... Okay. This is a separable differential equation. Because now what I can do is move up the dx okay, and make this dx is equal to negative dv. And I can integrate both sides. Okay, now again, I'm assuming a certain level of, of comfort with, with calculus here as we go through this. But the integral of x will be so the integral of 1 dx is just going to be x plus a constant, and I'll deal with that in just a second. On the right-hand side, the integral of, of negative dv will be negative v, and then I'm going to put the, the constant of integration over there. Now, whatever constant I would have gotten on the left-hand side, I'll just move it over to the right or, or whatever. I'm just going to plug it in at the end here. Now, in, in the previous example that I, I showed you when we walked this thing through, everybody, I did, I did this. Once I expanded that all out and simplified it, I got to a first order differential equation. Here, I got to a separable differential equation, so I didn't quite do the same thing I did before. Now, I, I will show you that in just a few moments. I, I will do something similar to, to this with my next example. This one simplified down quite a bit nicer because of the, res the form of the answer at this point here. Now, if I solve for V, because that's really what I'm interested in here, getting v, then I've got that little function that I needed or I assumed existed here. And so now my general solution, therefore, is going to be y is equal to x plus 1 over negative x plus c. Or if you really want to write it out like this, you could write it as x plus negative x plus c to the negative 1. And there you go. That's the solution. That is the function that is the solution to that Riccati equation. All right, let's take a look at a, another Riccati equation. And this one here, the solution is going to have a little bit of a different structure to it. It's going to be, look a little bit more like what I was doing uh, with that general expression earlier on here. So first of all, we're going to write this uh, like that Riccati equation. So dy by dx is going to equal... I will bring the, the y squared term over, so negative y squared plus x squared plus 1. Comparing this to the form that we saw originally here, we're going to see that a of x is going to equal negative 1. Turns out b of x is actually going to be 0. There is no, there is no linear term in y here. And then our constant here, or, or sorry, what's kind of taking the, the place of the constant, it's not. But... Uh, if you want to think of it that way, the c function here is going to be this x squared plus 1. We are told, once again, 
that the specific solution here, a particular solution, is going to be y1 is equal to x. And let's just take a look at that. The derivative okay, is going to be 1. And then if I plug x in there, I'm going to get 1 plus x squared, which is exactly what you're seeing on the right-hand side. So yeah, it is. That is a, a particular solution. Now we're going to use that particular solution to build the general solution. So we assume the form of our answer, y is equal to y1 plus 1 over v. Or in this particular case here, y is equal to x plus 1 over v. That's the, that's the general structure that I'm looking for. So take the derivative, dy by dx is equal to 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. And again, I'm going to make that substitution. So negative y squared, okay, plus x squared plus 1 is going to equal 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Now, on one hand, this might look a little simpler even than what we were doing just previously, uh, but there's going to be something a little bit different about this one in, in just a second or two here. Now I do that substitution. Okay, so y is equal to y, whoops, sorry, not just y1, I can be more specific than that, I know that's x. x plus 1 over v squared plus x squared plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. Let's square that and put the negative through, so negative x squared uh, minus 2x over v minus 1 over v squared plus x squared plus 1 equals 1 minus 1 over v squared dv by dx. All right, now just like before, notice the x squared term cancels. I got the 1 on both sides. That goes away. Now I'm going to multiply through by that denominator, that function v squared, to simplify this, and that is going to get me negative 2xv uh, minus 1 equals negative dv by dx. And actually, you know what? Now that I look at that right there, I'm actually going to throw a negative in front of this. I'm going to write, I'll multiply through by negative v squared. And what that'll do is it's just going to get rid of the negatives here. This cleans that up a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to look for. So uh, positive 2xv plus 1 is equal to dv by dx. Okay, now I'm going to bring that dv by dx over, uh, or sorry, better stated, I'm going to bring that 2xv over. So dv over dx minus 2xv is going to equal 1. And here, this is in the form of a linear first order differential equation. Okay, we've got the derivative of our v, function of x multiplied by v is equal to, again, another function of x. And that's a simple one, but, but still. Okay, so now we've, we've, reduced, we've reduced our first order quadratic differential equation to a first order linear differential equation. And this one here is a, is a bit easier to solve in general. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create that, that integration factor. I'm going to introduce that rho, which is going to be e to the integral of negative 2x dx, okay? Now, I know what that is. The integral of negative 2x dx, that is going to be e to the negative x squared, okay? Remember, you increase the exponent here by 1, divide by that new exponent. Well, I'm just going to be increasing that to 2, dividing by 2. The 2's will cancel. I get e to the negative x squared. So that is my integration uh, factor there. So Therefore, I'm going to use that and I'll multiply that through this linear uh, quad, uh, sorry, this linear differential equation. That's going to make this e to the negative x squared dv by dx minus 2x e to the negative x squared v. Oh, and I, I love how that looks. Okay. Because of that choice of integrating factor, I can see the derivative of that exponential function popping out. Love that. Is equal to, well, it's just a 1 on the right-hand side, so e to the negative x squared. The left-hand side here now okay, is the derivative with respect to x of e to the negative x squared v. 
I just love how that works. Really clever. So I can take that expression, which looks fairly complicated, and I just recognize, oh my gosh, that what I'm looking at is the application of the product rule of derivatives on that expression right there. So now uh, I take the integral of both sides here. Now on the left-hand side, that's just going to get rid of the derivative. So that's going to leave me with e to the negative x squared v. On the right-hand side, on the right-hand side, that's, that's a little bit trickier here. This is going to end up being the integral of e... Uh, actually, actually I'm going I'm to backtrack here a little bit. This is where I'm going to get a little bit stuck here. Now, yeah, I'm going to basically apply the... the uh, what, what is that called? The fundamental theorem of, of calculus here when I write this. We're going to rewrite this expression here. This is going to be um, 0 to the x of e to the negative t squared dt plus c. Now, when I take the derivative of the, the right-hand side here, th this is going to go back to this expression right here. You can investigate that on your own here. Um, I'm, I'm choosing to do this because I don't have uh, any boundary conditions. Well, actually, even if I did have boundary conditions, I could probably use this. But this expression right here, um, well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll discuss this in just a second, what's going on here. But I'm taking the integral here, uh, 0 to x, okay, e to the negative t squared dt plus c. Again, that is just an application of the, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And when I solve for v, v is going to equal e to the positive x squared multiplied by 0 to the x of e to the negative t squared dt plus c. Okay, that's my v, so now I can go back and I can write my general expression y is equal to x plus, now I know this is a little ugly here, um, but it's going to be, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that e to the x squared it was supposed to be 1 over v. So this is going to be 1 over e to the x squared integral of 0 to the x of e to the negative t squared dt plus that arbitrary constant. Okay? Now that's that's a, a big mess down here. This is this is really quite gross. However, however, you might recognize that as something that we call the Gaussian. Okay, what that is, and I'm, I'm going to move this e to the x squared up, just, sorry, I'm going to put a negative exponent on that just to get it out of the way, negative x squared. This right here, okay, that's what we use when we look at, uh, like, the normal distribution. This is a fairly well understood integral here, even though I, th I believe it needs to be solved uh, numerically. So you can get the value uh, at any particular value of, of x here, you can plug that in. There are numerical methods of getting it. That might even be tabulated for, for all I know right off the top of my head. I, I don't know. But I know that if you go from 0 to infinity, that this is going to end up being the square root of pi over 2. Now, there's going to be some sort of error function here related to x because that's, that's not exactly true because you stop here at any value of x. Uh, it's, it's like finding the area under that curve out to some value of x here, um, it's not going to be completely root uh, pi over 2, uh, but some, some fraction of that. Anyway, anyway, I hope that gives you a little bit of a sense as, as to how the Riccati equation works. More than anything else here, what you, you get here is that we're, we're taking a, a quadratic, we're using a very special substitution here, to reduce that to a linear. Now, if we're lucky, like we were in that first question, when you do that substitution, you get a separable equa uh, differential equation, which is very easy to solve. If you get a, a first order linear equation, well, that's not that hard to solve either. Um, now, granted, this, this might not, when I say it's not hard to solve, that might look a little ugly here. But really, it was a fairly direct process to get there. We come up with our integration factor, plug it through, uh, take that that uh, expression that really is just the product rule, go backwards, and then integrate. Okay. 
I don't know if that specifically answers the the question of the individual that that requested this. I I, I want to uh, to help as much as I can. I really do. Um, beyond this, it's maybe a little bit out of my league at this point. So I hope that gives you something. Thanks.